After having left a previous picture due to financial difficulties, horror and science fiction filmmaker Larry Cohen immediately began work on his next film, a giant monster movie that would highlight a major New York City landmark, in this case the Chrysler Building, much in the same way King Kong did to the Empire State Building. For the monster, he imagined a giant bird, and in researching for ideas, came across the legend of Quetzalcoatl, a mythological feathered serpent worshipped by the Aztecs. With his monster now set, Cohen crafted a story and rushed headfirst into production, the result of which is 1982's simply titled Q, a film that, despite its many faults, would go on to become a cult classic among horror and monster movie aficionados. <laughs> Just as Detective Shepard begins investigating strange ritualistic murders plaguing New York City, petty criminal Jimmy Quinn takes part in a failed diamond heist that leaves him on the run from the police. While hiding out in the Chrysler building, he discovers a large nest littered with the bodies of missing New Yorkers, causing him to flee and question his sanity. Soon reports of a giant bird begin to spread throughout the city, and seeing a way out of his predicament, Quinn makes a deal with Shepard and the police to show him the nest for a hefty finder's fee, but what they find ends up up being more horrifying than they imagined. Q is one of those movies that feels like it never quite lives up to its full potential. It starts out very promising, with a couple of brutal and comically abrupt deaths that sets the plot in motion. However, it quickly gets bogged down with a storyline that isn't all that interesting and isn't told particularly well. Part of this is due to both Larry Cohen's script and his slapdash directing, which on the one hand is quite charming, giving the film a low-budget grungy feel though no doubt contributes to its cult status. But this also holds the film back from ever excelling in ways that make for a genuine genuinely great monster movie. A large part of this disappointment comes from the film's lack of focus on its title creature. For a film titled Q, it's not in the movie all that much. If anything, the title Q stands more for the character of Jimmy Quinn, but Quinn elicits little sympathy from the audience. Despite a great performance by Michael Moriarty, he's an immensely pathetic character, whiny and annoying in a way that takes away from one's enjoyment of the film. This is all the more frustrating because it takes away screen time from the infinitely more likable Detective Shepard, played with a self aware sense of humor by David Carradine. The storyline of him investigating the ritual murders is both more interesting and more connected to the premise of the film, but it's never focused on in any meaningful way, to the point where you could cut it from the film and it wouldn't change anything. As for the actual Quetzalcoatl itself, what little we see of it in the film is pretty impressive, at least for the time. While the stop motion used to bring it to life isn't anything you haven't seen before, the design by Larry Cohen is quite inspired, a mixture of bird and snake traits that's weird and oddly disturbing. If anything, the stop motion contributes to the otherworldly nature of the creature, making it feel truly alien and out of this world. It's a shame then that the film never gives it anything to do other than pop up every so often to brutally kill someone. Most of Q's screen time is saved for the finale, which, while having a few fun moments, is very brief and underwhelming, especially if you're looking for a bit of destruction or mayhem. Whether due to budget constraints or by creative design, you're not going to get it. Despite these faults, Q does have a few things going in its favor. The film greatly benefits from on-location filming in New York City, making it feel broad in scope despite its relatively small-scale story. The crew spent much of their time actually filming at the top of the Chrysler Building, a risky endeavor that paid off via some sweeping aerial shots that contrast nicely with the claustrophobic interior. The film also has a sense of humor about itself that helps endear you to it even as it continues to underwhelm. And finally, the film can be pretty sleazy and gruesome at times, which for some will be a major plus, but may turn others off that prefer their creature features to be a bit more family friendly. In a lot of ways, Q is an exercise in frustration, especially if you go in with any sort of expectations. As a monster movie, it underwhelms because the Quetzalcoatl never feels at the forefront of the plot. Instead, the film is more interested in the story of Jimmy Quinn, a character so inherently unlikable you'll likely be left hoping Q will come along and gobble him up so that David Carradine's character can take his place. This is a shame because the monster is really cool and interesting, as is the mythology around it, but both are half-baked and barely explored. Admittedly, it's 
it's got some good stuff going for it. It's got a charming sense of humor, and it's delightfully violent in ways unique to the 80s. These things make it easy to see why it has gone on to become a cult classic. It's that type of movie you discover late at night without any expectations going in. Check it out for yourself, just know that your enjoyment is entirely dependent on your expectations, and how much you can stomach the main character. For more reviews and opinions on all things kaiju, subscribe and stay tuned to Up From The Depths.